Come on, let's give God a, can we stand to our feet and give God a head clap of praise? Come on, let's give him praise like we love him on this morning. Hallelujah. We're safe. Safe in his arms. Anybody know anything about that this morning? Hallelujah. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. And we're safe in his arms. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord on today? Hallelujah. Amen. It's good. It's good for us to be in the house of the Lord. Listen, I'm going to get right into the word of God. But before I do, I, I just want to take a moment to recognize those that are dealing with cancer, suffered the loss of a loved one from cancer. Uh, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge them this morning. How, how many know it's a real fight? It's, 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 when, it's when your faith is really tested. Yeah. Amen. So uh, if, if you're standing in here today and you're dealing with cancer, you have a loved one that dealt with cancer, uh, could, you just, could you just raise your hand high so we can, so we can see you? Amen. 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 I want to pray for you right now. Keep those hands. Keep those hands lifted. Father God, we come before you today. And Lord God, we're standing on your word. For we understand, Father God, that we never would have made it this far had not been for your grace and mercy. We thank you right now, Lord God, for victory. For Father God, you've given us strength even in our time of weakness. We thank you, Lord God, for seeing the tears that we cried that no one else saw, but you saw them. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us strength in the inner man when we didn't know how we were going to stand. I thank you right now for these, your children, that are dealing with it, Lord God, that you will continue to strengthen them. I decree and declare that their faith shall not fail. I pray for those, Lord God, that have been affected by this deadly disease, Lord God, that you will continue to strengthen and comfort them and let them know, Lord God, remind them that victory belongs to you. And so, Father God, we won't let it steal our praise. We won't let it take our joy. But even now, Lord God, we'll lift our hands, Father, and we'll say thank you for being the God of a second chance. Thank you for being a God that strengthened us when we're weak. Thank you for being a God that deserves all of our honor and all of our praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise even right there. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We're standing with you. There is a word today from the Lord, and it comes to us from the book of beginnings. The book of Genesis, chapter 21, beginning at verse 1. God is so good. Genesis 21, beginning at verse 1. Hallelujah. God has smiled on me. He has said, in spite of what I'm going through, I can still declare, God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. Come on, let's sing that from our spirit this morning. Come on, God has. Smiled on me. He has said. Genesis 21, Genesis 21, beginning at verse 1, where the Lord reads, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son, 
who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh. And all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. Can somebody say amen? I want you to help me preach this little sermon this morning. Uh, could you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever it is that you've been waiting on, I want you to know it's still going to happen. Turn to the other neighbor, turn to the other neighbor, tell him it's still going to happen. You believe that? Come on, give God a hand clap of praise today like it's still, it's still going to happen. God said it, I believe it, and it's still going to happen. Father God, we thank you today that you are God that keep his promise. You are promise-keeping God. So, Father, we come today to lift up your name for you are worthy of all of our praise and all of our honor. And so, Father God, we've come today to hear a word from you. We ask that you would speak to us from the volume of the book, O oh God. Speak to every heart, every mind, every spirit in this place today. Holy Spirit, I avail myself over to you. Use my mouth to declare your word to these, your people. Now, Lord God, let he who has an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church on today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Those that love him said amen. 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 You take your seat. As you take your seat, somebody shout with defiance. It's still going to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's still. It's still going to happen. Yeah, I, I know, I know we're in the 10th month of the year, but it's still going to happen. There's some things God told me in January, and I don't have it yet, but it's still going to happen. Let's just take a moment and give God a shout like it's still going to happen. It's still going to happen. I'm going to keep my eyes on God. He started it, so he's going to finish it. He called me, so he's going to keep me it's still. It's still. It's still going to happen. Hallelujah. Listen, saints of God, please, please hear me. I need you to really get this message in your spirit today. I did not come this morning to preach a sermon. I came to deliver a message. I need you to get this in your spirit. God's promise to you is not limited by age, nor is it restricted by time. God controls time, but God does not live in time. He lives in eternity. That is why when uh, Moses was writing the book of Genesis, he could not say in God's beginning, because God does not have a beginning nor an ending. So he had to write it from the position of the beginning of time. Hear me, saints of God. Because anything that was made in time has an expiration date. That, that is why when people die, we, we say that they've transitioned. They've transitioned because the body that was created in time goes back to the ground, but the spirit goes back to eternity. It's important that you grab this right here because the promise that God made concerning you was made outside of time. Y'all miss your shout. The promise that God made to you, children of God, was made outside of time. Therefore, it can never expire. It has to be fulfilled. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But the enemy tries to convince you that you are in a race against time. But I've come to tell you this morning that you're not, but he is. This is 
is why that whenever Jesus stepped on the scene, the demonic spirit would, all, would always say, what have we to do with you, Jesus, son of God? Watch this. Have you come to torment us before our time? Because the enemy knows that he is on the clock. But I've come to tell you, saints of God, you are in the world, but you're not of the world. You are in time, but you're not of time. So whenever God blesses you, he does it on time. Oh, I wish, uh, oh, yeah. Somebody shout, the promise is still there. Well, watch this, watch this, saints. I really need you to get this thing down in your spirit because if you don't have this in your spirit, the enemy will try to come into your mind and convince you that it's too late for you. He will try to come into your mind and, 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 and convince you that God has forsaken you. And he will begin to ask you questions like, where is your God? Is there anybody in here that has ever gone through any trials, tests, and tribulations in your life that got so severe to the point that you have to look to heaven and say, God, where are you? I've been crying all of these tears. I've done everything I know to do. I've touched my neighbor and I've prayed with my prayer partner. God, where are you? You begin to ask the question because you will say, God, I can't feel you and I can't see you. God, where are you in this situation? Can I tell you this morning where he is? He's in three places. He's behind you to catch you if you fall. He's beside you because he is a friend that sticks closer than the brother. He is in front of you at the finish line saying that you got to come on and finish this race. Touch your neighbor and tell him, finish the race, finish the race. Here, here, here it is, here it is. I need you to catch this. Because God has not forgotten what he promised you. I, I know it's been time. and I know a lot of things have happened in your life. This is why, saints of God, you cannot put God's promise to you on your timeline. I've told you before, God don't set his clock by your watch. God does it. When he know that it is time for that thing to take place. He, he, here it is. Here it is. Abraham, he helps us right here. He helps us in this story because Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. Yeah, we don't know how old he was when he received the promise. But the Bible tells us that he was 75 years old when he finally left Haran moving on the promise of God. Ten years passed. From the time that he left Haran to now they're still there and God has not fulfilled the promise yet. And because it's been 10 years that have passed by, Sarai says to Abram now, listen, God has restrained me from having children. And since God has restrained me, why don't you go into my maid safe servant, Hagar? Because it's been now 10 years and God's promise has not come to pass. Let me pause for a moment here parenthetically and tell you, be very careful when you try to help your God fulfill his promise to your life. Touch your neighbor and say, just let God be God. Let God be God. So here it is. So, so now, watch this, saints. Now here it is. Abraham now was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. I need you to catch this because from the time that Ishmael was born, watch this, to the time that God spoke to Abram again was 13 years. There is no biblical writing that says and shows us that God had any conversation with Abram for 13 years. And so, since now, God has not spoken to Abram. It's ever since the, the time that Ishmael was born, Abram could now perceive and think that maybe God was okay with it. But I've come to tell you that silence don't mean acceptance. Uh, just because I ain't saying nothing don't mean I'm okay with it. I wish I, I wish I had somebody in here that would agree with me right through that. Just because I'm not speaking on it, don't mean that I'm okay with it. Here it is, 13 years later. I'm still right here in my text. Abram is 99 years old. He's 99 years old, and now God speaks to him and reminds him of the promise. Not only does he remind him of the promise, he says, watch this, I'm going to change your name. You should no longer be called Abram. 
you shall be called Abraham, the father of many. Watch what God is doing. He's calling him something that he's not because God knows that he shall become it. Uh, I, I come to talk to somebody today. God calling you what you're not because he knows that you're going to walk into it. Touch your neighbor and say, you're going to walk into it. Here it is now. So Abraham now is a hundred years old when Isaac is born. I need you to catch that because what God wants Abraham to know is the same thing that he's teaching us to do today is although he had to wait for it a long time. He says to him, I am Lord God Almighty. Let me tell you something this morning about your God. God can bless you so good that you'll forget how long it took to get it. I wish I had some witnesses in here today. Is there anybody in here that's ever received a blessing from God and said, God, you have restored the years that the locusts took away? Do I have any witnesses in the house today? He hear this, so, so, so I feel you pulling on me saying, well, 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 preacher, why can't I get it now? Well, here it is. The reason that, that, that you could not have gotten it then, uh, God, God says, now, I know that it's been some years. Here it is, uh, uh, Deacon James. He says, I know it's been some years from the time that I made the promise to the time that I brought it to pass. And the reason I couldn't give it to you right away, watch this, is I can't give you the promise before I give you the process. I have to let you go through the process first because if I give you the promise before the process, you won't appreciate the promise. Ah, Y'all got to help me preach this thing in here. So God says, now I'm going to let you go through some stuff. I'm going to let you deal with some denials. I'm going to let you get to the end of your own strength. I'm going to let you bump your head a little bit. I'm going to let you make some bad decisions. I'm going to let you make some bad choices. I'm going to let you get to the point that you said things are so bad, I got the t-shirt, the credit bill, and the credit report to show that I made a wrong decision. Once it is that you've made the wrong decision and you've learned that you can't do it without God, God steps in right on time. Is there anybody in here that's blessed with something today that you're glad God didn't give it to you when you asked him for it? Give God a shout of praise right there and say, God, thank you for being on time. Here it is. I need you to catch this because you can't always tell who or, or what God is going to use to bring the promise to pass. This is why you got to be careful about looking down your nose at folks. You, got to, you, got to be, you have to be careful about treating folks all such and much because you don't know who. It may be somebody on your road. You didn't even speak to them during past the peace, but God says your blessing is in their hand. I, I wish I had somebody in here that said you, you don't know who God is going to use to bless you. But watch this because when God calls you, watch this, your calling won't match your appearance. <sighs> Come here, let me, let me talk to you. God says, I'm going to bless you so well, you won't look like what it is you've been through. See, 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 come here. You, you, you can't look at a thing and say, that's too old, that's too young. Because God says, listen, I'm going to bless it so good that you can't look at it. Because well, watch this thing, so God, Moses didn't look like he should have been able to lead the children of Israel out of bondage. He couldn't even talk right, but God used him. Gideon didn't look like he was a mighty man of valor, but God pulled him out of his cave and used him anyway. I wish I had some Bible readers in here. David didn't look like he was going to be the king of Israel, but when God's anointing is upon you. This is why when Jesus said that he came amongst his own and his own received him not, because he didn't look like what it is he came to do. So you, you got to be very careful because th th there may be some people on your road and they may be looking at you funny because you're not dressed like them and you didn't pull up in what they pulled up in. But tell them, please don't look at me wrong, honey, because God is going to use me in this season. So, 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 here it is, here it is, here it is. Because the one that God normally uses is the one that everybody else has kicked to the curb. <sighs> see, see, so, so. So, 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 so watch this now. Watch this. The painful part. I'm almost where I'm going. The 
The painful part of the process, somebody say process. The painful part of the process is when God has to come in and remove what never should have been there. Uh, uh, that, that's, that, that, uh, let me talk to this side. I'm getting more love over here. here. The painful part is when God has to come in and surgically remove something that should have never been there in the first place. I wish I had some help up in here today. Because anything that has the potential to harm your purpose has to go. I don't know who I'm talking to. Anything that has their eyes on your purpose because they want to destroy it, God says they got to go. See, stop crying over people that had to leave your life. God said they couldn't have stayed if they wanted to. If they was a part of your purpose, I would have let them stay, but I had to move them. He says here, watch, watch, watch this. Here it is. Here it is. In order for Isaac to really stand in his position as the son of promise, watch this, Ishmael had to leave. I know you love Ishmael, Abraham. I know you spend 13 years with him, but he's not who I chose. You chose him yourself. I can't get no help in here. Uh, we are in a season. I love you too much to lie to you. We are in a season that it's time for you to identify your Ishmael. It is time for you to identify that person, place, or thing that's getting in the way of what God is trying to do in your life. See how quiet it got right there? I, I, I got to tell you, until you move Ishmael, there's some things that God wants to bless you with that he can't bring your way. Oh, I wish I had some help even on this side. You have to identify that person, place, or thing that's getting in the way of what God promised you. So here it is. He says, you got to move it because you birthed that. It didn't come for me. And so although you tried to forge my name on it, I'm not responsible for it because it did not come for me. Oh, I can't get no love up in here today. Yeah, yeah. God, 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 God said, instead of waiting on what I said do, you moved out of season and did what you wanted to do and asked me to bless it. So now, in order for me to bring the blessing into your life that I want to bring into your life, you got to deal with that thing that you know shouldn't be there. Deal with that thing that you know is not ordained by God. He says, Abraham, here it is. He says, you got you to deal with it. Because until you deal with that thing, I can't bless you like I need to. You got to deal with it right now, Abraham. Watch this, saints of God. Uh, because there's nations they're going to come from you. The reason you have to move that thing, watch this, is because it's bigger than you. You have to move it because there are nations that are going to be birthed outside of you. See, you're looking at the now, Abraham. I'm looking at what's next. The reason you didn't die in the now, <laughs> I wish I had, is because God saw what was next? The reason the club life didn't kill you then is because God saw what's next. The reason the weapon that's formed against you will never prosper is because God sees what's next. The reason that the sickness cannot be unto death is because God sees what is next. Do I have any witnesses in here today that said the reason I'm standing here today is because God saw what was next in my life? So here it is, here it is, here it is, he said, somebody shout, it's still going to happen. There are some folk that they stop praising God, and they stop praising them, Sister Tidwell, well, watch this, because, because where they are now don't look like what God promised. Come here, let me talk to you. So you come to church and you won't worship him and you won't lift your hands because what you're going through right now don't look like the promise. 
God says, can I trust you to give me praise when you look into the mirror and it don't reflect what I say? Can I trust you to believe in the vision even when it don't look like it's going to come to pass? Will you still give me a shout of praise and believe that your child is going to turn around? Are you going to trust me to believe that that sickness in your body has to go? I'm looking for some believers this morning to just give God a shout of praise like I believe it's coming to pass. I believe it. I don't know when, but I know it shall. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I know he's going to do it. My weeping may endure for a night, but my joy is coming in the morning. Though he slay me, yet would I trust him. I know what God promised me. I can't see it, but I believe it by faith. Is there anybody in here that believe by faith? It's going to come to pass. Touch a neighbor. Give him a high five and tell him it's still going to happen. It's still. It's still. It's still going to happen. Watch this. I don't care what the doctor said. It's still going to happen. I don't care what the bank said. It's still going to happen. I don't care who they want to promote. God said the position belongs to me. I don't care who said it. It's still going to happen. Here it is. Here it is, Deacon James. God told me to tell you. Told me to tell you. Tell him I'm going to make him laugh again. I wish I had some help in here. I don't know what you're dealing with this morning, but the word for God to you is, tell him I'm going to make him laugh again. I'm going to do some things outstanding in their life. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man. I'm going to make him laugh again. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I'm done. I'm done. All my cancer survivors, God said he's going to make you laugh again. What the enemy meant for evil, God said I'm going to use it for your good. Here it is. I'm done. I want everybody standing on their feet. Somebody shout it's still going to happen. It's still. Here it is. God told me to tell you, I know it looks like it's dead. But God said, that's when it's just right for me. When it gets to the point that can't nobody else take credit for what I'm getting ready to do. The doctor can't take credit for it. The real estate agent can't take credit for it. The supervisor can't take credit for it. God says, I would do this thing. And that thing that the enemy thought was going to kill you. God said, that's just a part of your testimony. I'm going to use your testimony to encourage somebody else that the same God that did it for me, I'm in, I'm in time, but I'm not of time because the blessing that was made to me it was made outside of time and so I'm not looking to the clock and I'm not putting God on my watch because I'm outside of time I'm looking into time and I'm waiting on my God to bring that thing to pass so I'm talking to you in here today God told me tell you the word that goes out from my mouth shall not cannot come back to me void if I said it, I'm going to do it. If I spoke it, I'm God enough to bring it to pass. And I don't know how long you've been waiting, but the word from the Lord for you this morning is, it's still going to happen. Give God a hand clap of praise all over this building. Like I believe it's still going to happen. Listen. Listen, if you're standing in this place this morning and you're not saved, 
you're standing in this place this morning, you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and said, can I tell you, there is no better place to be than in his safety. It, it's, it's, it, 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 I can't even find the words to articulate. Webster has not created a word big enough to, to help me explain to you the capacity of our God. It's something about being on the Lord's side that makes everything all right. If you're standing in here, you're not saved, you're not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He made it so simple for you. He said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that he rose from the dead, you would be saved. You would be saved. If you don't know him in the pardon of your sin. And if you're not 100% certain today, preacher, if I die today, you won't have to make up anything at my home going. You know why? Because if I leave on this side, I'm confident that I'll show up on that side. Because I have a relationship with him. If you're standing here today and you're not saved, you're standing here today and you know your mother and your father raised you up in the way to go. But life took over and you walked away from the way you was raised. That's all right. He's standing there to receive you back unto himself. If you backslid but you want to come back to him, he's standing with his arms wide open. If you're standing there, you'll be looking for a church home. Listen, I, I would love to be your pastor. We would love to be your church family as we continue to be the hands and the feet of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ here in the earth realm. We would love to partner with you. So any of those calls right there, the doors of the church are open now. You can come. Touch your neighbor. Tell him, I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you because I want to see you win. I want to see you get everything that God has for you. Touch them, touch them, say, I, 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 I'll walk with you this morning because I feel that there is something on your life. There's, there's something God wants to do in your life. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise all over the building. Let's do this. Let's do this for the second time. This is what I want to do. I want you to grab hands with the person on your left and right. I want you to squeeze their hand because they need a touch this morning. Squeeze their hand because they need somebody to touch and agree with them that this thing is still going to happen. Squeeze their hand right there. Repeat this prayer after me. Father, thank you for giving me another chance. All of the things that I've gone through in life, I still believe your promise is going to happen. You said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that he rose from the dead that I would be saved today that's my confession and that's my belief come into my heart change me from the inside out in Jesus name amen come on let's give God a hand clap of praise all over the building Pastor Luke, man of God, pass, pass the Luke, man of God, pass the Luke.